Hello learners, hope you all are doing good. This is the second part of Generative AI Professional Solution. So in the first part we have covered 10 questions. Now in the second video also I will cover 10 questions. So uh, if you haven't seen the first video, you can go to Learning Plant and check this video to have 10 questions. All the question is having correct answer. If you see any issue, please comment, please share, subscribe to your uh, friends and your colleagues because uh, Oracle is providing OCI Generative AI certification free till 31st July 2024. So it's a great opportunity to learn something and get certified by 31st July in free because after that it will be paid and it, it will be very costly. Okay, so th this video is for the registration purpose. So if you haven't yet registered, you can view this video and get registered yourself. Now let's jump to check the solution for other questions. So I will start with 11th question. How do dot product and cosine distance differ in their application to comparing text embedding in natural language processing? So let's understand what is dot product. So basically dot product emphasizes both magnitude and direction. Whereas cosine purely focus on the angle between vectors. Depending upon our specific NLP task and the characteristic of our data, we can choose the most appropriate similarity measures. So uh, for these options, we can see dot product is used for semantic analysis whereas cosine distance is used for synthetic comparisons. Okay, so this option is correct. So I will mark it yellow so you will have good visibility. Uh, what issue might arise from using a small data set with the vanilla fine tuning method in the OCI generative AI service? So uh, basically uh, overfitting uh, might arise from using a small data set with the vanilla fine tuning method in the OCI generative AI service. So the fourth option is the correct option. Okay. So basically uh, when uh, overfitting occurs. So overfitting occurs when a model learns to perform exceptionally well on the training data but fails to generalize to unseen examples. With a small data set, the model can easily memorize the limited training sample, capturing noise and specific to the that data. As a result, it becomes less robust when faced with new inputs. So when you are having um, a small data set with the vanilla fine tuning method in the OCI generative AI service, it, there is a chance that overfitting will arise. Okay, so correct option is overfitting. How does the utilization of t few transformer layer contribute to the efficiency of fine tuning process? So this question is very important and you will get lots of question in your exam from t few transformer layer. Okay, so the key functionality of t few uh, transformer layer is to restrict uh, the updates to a subset of transformer layer rather than updating all layers. So you need to uh, understand first what is T tuning, T T few fine tuning. So basically, the major characteristic of uh, the T few tuning is that it aims to improve efficiency during the fine tuning of LLM models. Okay, and it involves restricting updates to only a subset of transformer layer rather than updating all layer. It will only update a subset of transformer layer. It will not update all the layers. So the correct option will be this by restricting update to only a specific group of transformer layer rather than updating all. Okay, so we need to uh, remember this concept to give other answers also, which is a key characteristic of annotation process used in a TPU fine tuning. So uh, basically when a developer is developing uh, the uh, models, uh, they need to 
uh, update the pairs manually okay so uh, for setting these they need to uh, like requires a manual annotation of input output pairs so the correct option is second one okay what does loss measure in the evolution of oci generative ai fine tuned models so a uh, loss uh, in the evolution of oci generative ai fine tuned models measure the level of incorrectness okay so we need to check the level of incorrectness so this option uh, in the model prediction with lower value indicating the better performance no this is incorrect the percentage of incorrect prediction made by the model compared with the total number of prediction in the evolution so this is correctly defining the loss the percentage of incorrect prediction made by the model compared with the total number of prediction in the evolution when should you use t few fine tuning method for uh, training a model so i already said for data set with few thousand sample or less okay so here i um, given the concept that by restricting update to a only a specific group of transformer layer rather than updating all okay so the correct answer for this is for data set with few thousand samples or less okay now which is a key advantage of using t few over vanilla fine tuning in the oci generative ai service so uh, t few is for uh, a faster training time and lower cost okay so the correct option for this will be faster training time and lower cost because uh, we already know right that uh, t few focuses on efficiency by restricting updates to a subset of transformer layer making it well suited for a smaller data set and resource constraint it will not update all the transformer layer it will always update or restrict a, a specific set of transformers okay that's why it will increase the faster training time and it will reduce the cost okay now let's move to the another question how are fine tuned customer model stored to enable a strong data privacy and security in the oci generative ai service so um, stored in object storage encrypted by default any other option no so this is unencrypted so correct option uh, is uh, stored in the object storage encrypted by default so this is the correct option which statement best describe the role of encoder and decoder model in the natural processing so basically you need to understand what a encoder or decoder do so basically encoder and decoder architecture enables tasks like translation summarization and text generation in natural language processing so the correct option in these four uh, option is the third one where you can see encoder model convert a sequence of word into a vector representation and a decoder model take this vector representation to generate a sequence of word so basically you can see encoder and decoder are like opposite to each other okay they are what the functionality is different encoder is converting the sequence of word into a vector representation whereas decoder is converting the vector representation to generate a sequence of word okay now the last question of this set is which role does a model endpoint serves in the inference workflow of the oci generative ai service so uh, the correct option in this is serves as a designated point for user request and model response so uh, in uh, in the model endpoint in the inference workflow of the oci generative ai service serves as a designated point for user request and model response when user make request to the model the endpoint handle the inference process like the functionality of endpoint to handle the inference process generating models prediction and returning them to the user it acts as the bridge between the deployed model and external application or a client that's why the correct option for this question is serves as a designated point for user request and model response option first so we already covered 20 question from this uh, um, oci generative ai um, exam certification 
प्लीज शेयर सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल ओके एंड लेट मी नो इफ यू फाइंड एनी इशू इन दिस सॉल्यूशन वी विल अपडेट इट अकॉर्डिंगली थैंक यू